What is the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> That's what you're going to hear when you watch this show on Zoom. Okay, so it's time for another koan. And by the way, I, I didn't mention this because they chimed in with us right away, Zoom audience. I have a COVID audience. It's right. They're a tiny group of people, all in masks. I barely know them. And, and they're helping us out. I hope can, you can hear them and everything. They're jolly, jolly, jolly. Yeah. Thank you. So much. Yeah. All right, so need another koan. And this koan is, if you want to know the truth, hold no opinion, just like the Democrats mm. and the Republicans and the Muslims, and the Catholics. Oh wait, there's been a change in the Catholic Church. There's been pink smoke over the Vatican. As a woman and as mother of the church, I think that human life is sacred. But I don't think abortion is the problem. I think it's conception. <laughs> so I'm going to propose that all the young men starting at the age of 16 get a vasectomy. <laughs> yes, that's what the ranchers do, you know, when they want to call the herd. Well, they fix the bulls, that's right. And they're, they're right, it's science, it's science. And, and it's cheap, and it's simple, yeah. Capiche? Snippity snip snip. Yeah. Snippity snip snip. That's right. Now women, we don't have to punish them for being in a family way. And if you men, oh, if you're taking offense, my fellow man, your fellow women totally understand. Ah, uh, Benicio! Ah, oh, Benicio! Goodbye. Yeah. Snippity doo da, snippity yay. My oh my, what a wonderful day. So, science has uh, been challenged a lot lately, hasn't it? It dev definitely has. You know, uh, but the Catholics believe in science. They believe in evolution. I was taught that a day in God's life could be a trillion years. And they believe in climate change. But I know a science teacher that doesn't believe in science. He doesn't believe in global <laughs> warming. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Disco Inferno, Disco Inferno. Yeah, poor California and Oregon and everything. But I know that sometimes science does sound like fake news. I don't know if you know this, but some female ducks have three vaginas. That's right. One of them is, one of them is fake. One of them. And, and if she doesn't like the male on her back, she can send him down the wrong door and it's a dead end. And that sperm isn't going anywhere. Now, I know what the first one's for. I do not know what the third one is for. <laughs> Menage a duck, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but in any case, oh, and did you know that some snakes have two penises? That's right. Now, that's handy. <laughs> Don't touch that line. But if one penis fails, he doesn't need Viagra. Pretty good. And then there, <laughs> and 
then there's the Komodo dragon. Uh, if, if she has a baby, she doesn't necessarily need a, the input of a male. No, she can just have the baby. It's called parthenogenesis. We call it Christmas. <laughs> Okie dokie there. But you know, uh, science can't define life, but neither can religions. Okay, so now I want to talk to my COVID audience. Uh, uh, what have you been doing this pandemic? Oh, before you say anything through those masks, I know you've been boring. I know you've all been boring. Because what do you talk about? Cooking, what you ate, you know, uh, how much exercise you're not doing, uh, who wasn't wearing a mask, and, and, and who you dodged at the grocery store. And, oh, I'm already bored. I'm, already, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt myself. I've, I've noticed things now that we've calmed down a little bit. Like I have a neighbor who is in his house by himself wearing mask and gloves. And there are people in cars by themselves wearing a mask and glove. Now, do they think they have the virus and they might give it to themselves? <laughs> Is that it? I don't really know. And then uh, you can go to the parks, you know, you can go to the parks and, and, and when you go to the parks and everything, you don't have to wear a mask, but you notice how if somebody's getting too close, you, walk, you, you lost me, I'm sorry. Okay, you walk away, you stare at a wall or, or you come back or something or you say, safe, be safe, you know, be safe. Yeah, but uh, one thing I noticed at the parks are these jogging strollers. They've got these mothers and fathers running their children instead of walking them in the park. And these poor little children who are trying to develop little kidneys and little hearts and little things are and, and you know they're not going to know that that green stuff are leaves until they're five. <laughs> anyway, how about that Zoom, huh? Oh, by the way, I heard a great line that when we finally get to take off our mask during the day, it's called an airgasm. <laughs> now I know you're all really playing around with Zoom. We're doing it tonight, God knows, and it is uh, tr very tricky stuff. I hope everybody is getting all this. But uh, you, we're doing our makeup, we're getting our hair right, or some people are sitting in the shade or the dark or something like that. But I've been getting a little bit crazy from doing Zoom too much. And so sometimes I'll get in front of the screen and experiment, experiment with like the last rose of summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know what's coming. Thanksgiving and the killer squash. No, I hate squash. Ah! <laughs> Or something we fear a lot is coming. <laughs> Santa. It is time for your last koan. <laughs> All right, it is, I can't complain. Now, I've always hated that phrase. When you ask somebody, how are they doing? And they say, I can't complain. To me, it means I could complain, but I'm not. We but then I the found street. out My that heart it skips was a actually I say to myself, Hello. My cousin Linda, my first cousin Linda Owenby died at 68 years old, which I consider very young. And uh, she was born with spinal bifida, but she was a miracle. She could walk. She could dance. We could be teenagers together. I mean, it was amazing. If there was a few things wrong, say, lower down. But in any case, uh, they said she couldn't marry. She did. They said, you can't have children. She did. Anybody ask her how she's doing? Hey, Linda, how are you doing? She'd say, I'm fine. Why do you ask? <laughs> you know, she was just that kind of person. But finally, the spinal bifida caught up with her. And I went to see her at the nursing home. And when I walked in, what a vision. She was in bed, her legs were swollen, 
She was connected to an IV. She had a feeding tube. She was on oxygen, you know, and the machine was going and going and going. And I looked at my lifelong friend and I said, Linda, how are you? And she said, I can't complain. I said, what? And we started laughing. <laughs> I can't complain. She's sitting there. I said, you're looking like Halloween and you can't complain? And she, we just laughed and laughed. And she said, well, no, because everybody's taking care of me. She said, they're cleaning me up. They feed me. They take me outside when it's pretty. She said, I even have a boyfriend now. I believe that, Linda, because she was sexy, even with the colostomy bag. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> but she, she was. She really was. She said, he's running around on me, though. I said, how do you know? She said, I saw him wheel into Betty's room. I said, I said you'll get him back, Linda. I said, but you are amazing. She said, I really can't complain. And I got it. There's where the joy is. That you are untouched really untouched by circumstances if you have appreciation for what you do have. And so how have you all been as an audience? I can't complain. <laughs> I cannot from you, Ben Carver.